room service, please. Hello. This is Mrs. Carl Hanneman, Bungalow 9. Would you please send a waiter over with the menu? Thank you. Good morning, Victor. You see, I think I'll take some orange juice and uh, toast, coffee. That'll be all. How was the ball game? Well, it was no ball game. It was a track meet. All well done nothing. This all the mail today? Yes. Yeah. By the way, I I meant to ask you sooner, but I'm going to have a little dinner party tonight for a couple I know. You're invited if you're not doing anything. Well, sure. What's the occasion? They're going to be married soon. They're awfully nice kids. Uh, married. And the trouble will really start. <laughs> Mr. Burns' office. Long distance calling. It's Mrs. Hanneman. Hello, Claire. Hello, Les. I'm so glad I caught you at the office. How's the honeymoon? It was interrupted. Carl had to go back east yesterday. Business, he said. He wanted me to stay over, wait for him here. But I'm not. I'm coming back to San Francisco tonight. You think that's sensible? Of course not. But I'll see you again. Look, I want you to arrange a plane ticket for me. Reservations are so hard to get at this end. It'll be easy for you. All right, Claire. I'll take care of it tomorrow. Tomorrow won't do. I'm coming home tonight. Okay, I'll wire you back on the time. I knew you'd help me. Be sure to meet me at the airport. I can hardly wait to see you. Goodbye, Les. Goodbye, Claire. Uh, June, uh, get a hold of Hack Doyle. Have him get me a reservation on the 8 o'clock plane out of Los Angeles tonight. It's for Mrs. Hanneman. Are you planning to meet her? Yeah. Oh, I guess I'll have to cancel our dinner party tonight. It doesn't matter. Apparently Claire can get anything she wants out of anybody at any time. Can't she? I never thought I'd be back with you so soon, darling. It's wonderful. It's crazy. Then why did you meet me? I don't know. I do. Because you still love me, don't you, Les? I'll get over it. I hope Carl stays in New York for a long, long time. That well, seems a bit odd he didn't arrange his business affairs so they wouldn't interfere with his honeymoon. Yes, I thought so, too. You said you and Hanneman didn't have some trouble. What kind of trouble could we possibly have had? Quarrel of some kind, perhaps over us. Now, wouldn't that be ridiculous? Giving him some reason to doubt me just so soon after we're married? What do you think they're doing now? You don't feel sorry for Carl, do you? No. No, I don't. But I should. Look, let's forget all about him. For a few days, anyway. Take me home, I'll change, and you can take me out to supper. Claire, I'd, I'd rather not go to the house. But I, I must freshen up, darling. I really must. You want me to be beautiful, don't you? Just for you? You are beautiful. See, there's nobody home. Wait in there, darling. I'll be down in a minute. Come in. Oh, darling. Les, what is it? Suicide. But why? 
Oh, poor Carl. Claire, I thought you said he'd gone to New York. That's what he told me. I don't understand it. Why should he do such a terrible thing? You probably know as much about that as anyone. It's going to be one of the first things the police ask you. You can't stay here, darling. I'll take you over to Hack Doyle's. Where's your telephone? Police headquarters, please. I thought of you and Hack right away, Mamie, and brought her over here. I hope you can put her up for tonight. Oh, of course. You can stay as long as you like, Claire. Thank you, Mamie. You're very kind. It's just too incredible. If you'd had any earthly reason, we were so happy. So very happy. And now there's... Oh, Hack, mm -hmm. Claire's going to stay with us for a few days. Good. Plenty of room. The police are over there now. Murdoch said he'd stop by here later. You sure it was suicide? Fairly sure. The man in Hanneman's position, a beautiful wife and all that money? I don't get it. I don't either. Oh, hello, Bill. Come on. How are you, Hack? Mm -hmm. Hello, Claire. Hello, Bill. Sorry this had to happen to you. Sit down, Captain. How about a cup of coffee? Thanks, Miss Doyle. I won't annoy you for long, Claire. Just a few questions, routine. You know how it is. Of course. Les gave me most of the details over the phone. Your husband, by the way, has been dead for nearly 24 hours. Uh, how did it happen that Burns met you at the airport? He didn't happen to. I found him from Los Angeles. How come? Well, I was arriving late and alone. I knew Les would pick me up. Do you have any theory as to why your husband came to San Francisco after telling you he was going to New York? No. I didn't know anything about the business. The gun, of course, was Hanneman's. We checked the serial number. Funny there are no powder burns on the coat. Bill, a suicide doesn't always press a gun against his body. In that case... There would be no powder burns, I know. Do you know of any reason why your husband should have taken his life? No, I don't. Anything wrong with his health? Not that I know of, but that could have been the reason. Had you quarreled? Oh, no. No, we never quarreled. Believe me. Throughout every minute of our married life, we were supremely happy. The entire week, huh? Well, that's all for now. I may want to talk with you again later. Where will you be? Right here with us. Thanks. Uh, Bill. Yeah? You, uh, found fingerprints on the gun, of course. I mean, uh, Hanneman's prints. Uh-huh. Clean as a whistle. Sir, Mr. Burns, that's the position you and Mrs. Hanneman found her husband. That's right. One more question, Mr. Burns. Your testimony at the coroner's inquest said you touched nothing. That's true. Then how did you know the man was dead without feeling his pulse or heart? Mr. Chalmers, I've been around enough to know a dead man when I see one. Especially after 20-some-odd hours. You uh, assumed that Mr. Hanneman committed suicide. Why? Well, everything points to suicide. Not in my assumption, Mr. Burns. Mrs. Hanneman, you say you saw your husband alive on Monday afternoon, and then the following night, which was Tuesday, you saw him again. Yes. But he was dead. I've told you everything. You don't need a weather vane to see which way this wind is blowing. Was it customary for the servants to uh, take a vacation whenever Mr. Hanneman left on a trip and leave the house empty? Well, I don't really know. I, I didn't give orders to the servants. Carl, Mr. Hanneman ran the house. I hadn't moved in yet. I see that uh, you also assumed that this was a suicide. Naturally, it couldn't have been anything else. That's what Mr. Burns said. According to the Police Scientific Detection Laboratory, the pistol found near the body was the one used in the death of your husband. But they found no powder burns on the clothes of Mr. Hanneman, nor fingerprints of any description on the gun. Furthermore, it was brought out that Mr. Hanneman couldn't have fired the gun because in making certain tests of his hand for traces of powder marks, none was found. Just what are you driving at? Simply this. Carl Hanneman was murdered. But unfortunately, I haven't enough evidence to hold either of you. 
You were out of town and your alibi was proven. You're free to go. But let me give you a tip. I'm not buying any suicide theory, so the case will remain open. See you later, Ed. So long, Hector. Good morning, Les. Just the guy I want to see. Yeah, about what? Oh, I've been assigned to do the follow-up on the Hanneman case. Oh, how'd you draw that? Oh, I asked for it. It'd be a dull job because there isn't going to be any follow-up. <laughs> Just an ordinary suicide. Are you kidding? I never smelled an odor of fish so strong in my life. No fingerprints on the gun, and you call it suicide. So what? What makes you so sure? Can you give me a good reason for Hanneman killing himself? No, I can't. Perhaps he thought he had a good reason. And perhaps he didn't. So meanwhile, if I can dig up a plausible motive... Who I... asked you to dig up a motive? Plausible or otherwise? I said, if I can dig up a motive, I'm willing to accept suicide. But if I can't, <laughs> then it'll have to be murder. Still carrying the torch for Claire, Hyle? Not anymore. But somebody sure fixed it in a hurry for you to get Claire again. That's a nasty crack. So meanwhile, chum, walk a straight line. Or you'll have people thinking you took a shot at Hanneman. You've got a lot of work to do, Al. You're so right, boss. Sorry, Hack. How's Claire taking it this morning? I don't know. She's still asleep when I left. Les, I'm worried about this deal. Police aren't buying any suicide theory. Is that why you put Herrick on the story? Maybe. He might dig up a suicide motive. What's your slant? Well, uh... Hanneman killed himself. Nice try, Hack. You're about as subtle as a punch in the nose. You think Hanneman was murdered, don't you? Maybe I'm protecting someone. It's possible. But I'd like to protect someone if it isn't suicide. Like who? Like you. Who had a better reason? Hanneman's death meant that you'd get Claire back and a million odd bucks. That makes sense to a lot of imaginative characters around this town. I don't believe it for one second. But I still think it's safer to sell a suicide theory if Harry can dig it up. Thanks, Hack. But I didn't do it. job. Hello, Benson. What's on your mind? The DA would like to see you gents in the morning. Says it's important. About 10 o'clock. What's he want us for? Don't you know. Uh, Mrs. Hanneman's already got her invitation. See you tomorrow. <laughs>